Welcome everybody. I'm Nikki Mayo, President of the Baltimore Association of Black Journalists, and thank you for joining us on a interesting weather Saturday. But uh, today we are going to talk about making it work at home because most of our jobs have kind of transitioned to we got to make it work at home, guys. And um, for some of our mediums, like if you're always been print, always been online, making it work from home is not that much of a challenge. But if you happen to be in a broadcast, arena um it can be a little daunting because there's so many electrical things that our our companies our stations buy and they may be tough to duplicate and as people are finding out there are ways to duplicate some of these things everything from lower thirds to multi multiple interview uh shows our guests today are making it work um even maybe some tips on how to get a man on the street interview when you can't go on the street we'll figure that out so Joining us today, and um, hopefully you'll see them, uh, we have, I'll do the ladies first, we have Elsa M, she is host of Midday Maryland, hopefully you guys have seen her on ABC2 or WMAR-TV, and um, I'll let them also do their elevator pitches so I don't scramble up too badly their bios. We have, um, Karen, are you there there, or what's the deal, hon? Hey, I am here. So, hey, everybody. Um, sorry I couldn't join you. Um, you know, on, uh, on video, I'm hoping to, to, to get back before this uh, uh, webinar is over. But uh, yeah, so I used to work for WBAL. And uh, last August, I moved to Indianapolis to work for an NBC station here. So I uh, do a little bit of anchoring, reporting. Um, so this session is, is really interesting because I, I do have uh, some of the tips that I have been uh, learning as, as all of us go along on, on how to make it work when you work you know, out of, out of an apartment with, with, you know, limited resources. Elsa, go ahead and introduce yourself and then I'll have Harold introduce himself. Sure. Well, I'm glad to be a part of BABG or BABJ now. Um, okay. I was one of the founding members of RABJ in Rochester, New York, when we kicked off. And now I'm going to age myself. What year was that? <laughs> 2004, uh, 2004 five ish year. I think, really? yeah. <laughs> One of the, I was a wee 10 year old at the time. Um, <laughs> but, um, so I was a reporter anchor up there for many years. Um, went to Louisville, Kentucky, back to Rochester, New York. I got out of the business completely um, for about seven years. And then um, by that time, I had already moved down here. And so I started at Channel 2 when they launched um, a lifestyle show because I knew I wanted to make the switch to something more personality driven and more upbeat. And so we launched that in September of 2017. Um, and I've known Ms. Nikki since she was a, a, wee, a wee cub reporter as well in our upstate New York days, freezing our bottoms off. So. There you go. And, and taking the whole through way tie, let's go back over to Buffalo where Harold Fisher actually worked once before, and that's our connection, but he's also one of the former presidents of the Association of Black Media Workers. Harold, what, did, what are you doing now? Well, as you know, I'm, I'm the anchor and host for the Daily Drum on WHUR, FM, the uh, Howard University Radio Network. I've been there since, wow, they brought me back in 2007. I actually, that was one of my first gigs back in the late 80s. I was there from 87 to 88, then went into television. And I worked for Channel 2, of course, in Buffalo. That was our Buffalo connection back in the late 90s. Uh, shout out to Rochester. <laughs> you know. And uh, my last gig in television was at uh, Fox 45 Morning News. We started that program in 2001. And I left in 2006, or it left me. You know how that goes. So, and did a little work for Governor Ehrlich, and then HUR called me back, and that's where I've been ever since. So, okie dokie. All right, guys. So, um, I'm gonna unmute Karen again. So, but let's jump on into it. How have your jobs changed? Um, you don't have to go too far in the weeds. I think we're all kind of stuck on we got to do everything from home. But how have your jobs changed as far as? doing it all from home and trying to deliver the same quality television and radio products that you have done in the past. Let's go to Elsa since I can see you. Hey. Okay. Um, well, I think for us, it was, I mean, for everyone, it was just so overnight, you know, so 
when I started my career, I was one man band and I was like, I'll never do that again. Um, but I guess I'm doing it again. <laughs> it's a different situation because now instead of um, going out in the field and shooting my own stuff, I'm in my studio shooting my own stuff and my studio happens to be my living room. Um, I think just the immediacy of everything, it wasn't like anyone had time to prepare. It wasn't like we said, oh, well, we know this is coming, so like, let's just get all our gear. Um, so I was surprised to find that there were a lot of things that I just had that were readily available, where I had the external mic ready to go, I had the lights ready to go. Um, I can connect, I'm sorry if you guys can hear my dog, he has no respect, but. Um, I'm going to try and connect. Um, gotcha. We see it. Okay, this is way too much of me. Hold on, let me try and. We got two oh, Elsa's. A lot. Yeah, that's. I don't even want that much of me. It's like frozen. Um, how do I switch the view? Uh, to reverse it so you can see. Yeah, I should be able to do that on Zoom, right? Or no? I haven't tried that. I've only tried it when I'm just talking to somebody and it hits. Okay, me. so I'm just going to there show you. Okay, I'll try it that way. So I've got these um, like box lights. Um, I do a YouTube show. Well, I was doing a YouTube show with a girlfriend of mine. It's now a podcast, the Eden Elsa show. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off because again, too much of me. Um, and um, so I sold that from her right away. I got mm -hmm. the external mic. Um, one thing that I've been noticing with Zoom, and I'm just gonna jump right into it. So stop me if you don't want me to go this far, uh, mm -hmm. Nikki is um, when I've been recording for our show, because we've been doing Zoom interviews, it looks fine when you're recording initially, um, but then when it tapes, sometimes it can be washed out. Have you guys ever noticed that when you're like recording it? Yeah, so that's been one of those things where you're just happy to be able to do the show remotely, which is great, but at the same time, the quality has suffered, I, I feel like in terms of the look of it, not necessarily the content of it. Um, but I'm working with a great team, so we've been able to finesse that and sort of work with the colors so that we're not, you know, the washed out. about being washed out, the, like second generation washed out that we're talking about, like fuzzy, what's going no, on? No, 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 I mean like pale, like, like, like I look like I got the Rona, you know, I'm not trying to look like I got the Rona, I'm trying to, okay. you know what I mean? So okay. is that, and then also, um, mm -hmm. so I'm recording, um, Zoom, but then when I am doing the ins and outs for the show, that's on my phone. So that video compared to Zoom video has been different. Um, the lighting hasn't changed, I'm in the same place, but just sort of syncing that. Um, audio wise, it hasn't been so bad. Like I said, I have this little external mic. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lapel mic that goes to my phone. Um, but even some things like that, like when you're trying to record your voice and you've got something in the jack, you can't then hear the person. So I've found some workarounds, if that makes sense, but everything's a little convoluted. I think it's just more so being patient with yourself, figuring out what is gonna work, what's not gonna work. I'm so glad that this is happening now and not back in 2003, because there would be Ooh. no way that we'd be able to still do, especially a show like mine, every day. Zoom was not even around. It wouldn't happen. Question. In question go for it in your video settings did you make the adjustment where to touch up your appearance oh you know what i just found out about that because i would have been used it ah. there's, there's a button you can just <laughs> if you if you check that it, it kind of tunes the yes. light the glare down a little bit yeah so check that out and see I, how that look how that I did, what change yes. that makes. i just found that out this week my AP, thank you sally my ap told me about it but I was like, yo, where were you like four weeks ago? <laughs> did it, um, it did, it sort of smooths everything over a little bit. Mm -hmm. I want them to add something where it just adds your makeup on for you too. Where it's like- a, it's And do like you a have a green app. screen? I don't do have, have a green screen. So that's the thing. So when this happened, remember it was like Thursday, they said all the kids aren't going back to school on Monday, right? And then we went to work on Monday. And then when I went to work on Monday, my boss told me, you're not coming back on Tuesday. So all of the starter was going quickly. So I asked them to purchase some things. And you guys know, newsrooms might buy something, they might not. Um, so they didn't buy the green screen right away, which now I'm sort of happy about because I work on a green screen and I don't necessarily like that look in studio. Um, so this is sort of showing them what an actual set would look like. Mm -hmm. That's been helpful. The lights I wish they had bought, they did not. 
Um, but they did get my mics and they got me some really good mics. Um, and I think if this keeps going and I have to give these lights back, they will invest in that because now they've seen it. Um, but on the front end, again, it wasn't anything that we planned for. And it was sort of like, just go make what works work. Then you can put in your own virtual backgrounds. That's one of the features I like about Zoom. Yeah. You can take some pictures and put in your own virtual background. I know, I see you on the beach. Jealous. <laughs> that's one of the, uh, that's one of Zoom's, um, backgrounds that they give you but you can also upload your own pictures for your background yes no absolutely it, the only difficult thing with me is my hair when i do that because i've got curly hair and so it sort of goes all weird yeah i was going to advocate against um there's things we can do for fun and then there's things we can do for work right and i hate to say it as in juxtaposition but the quality on those backgrounds like case in point look at the halo around um maria i like your starship enterprise look at the halo around her face yeah. That's not really ideal for your video. I mean, people understand you're doing it, but there's this weird like movement and Elsa's right. The more detailed your hair is, you start losing it as you start making movements. And right. that's really distracting. If someone's talking about a beautiful artwork, um, a service they offer, whatever that you're interviewing them about, you don't want to lose all of that interview to people being distracted by what happened to half of her head. I think that was, um, you know, not to get on Teddy Riley, but when he did interviews on The Daily Show, he had a nice fedora hat thing going on and it kept disappearing every time he turned what? around. So those type of things I want y'all to be aware of because this is yeah. kind of a second uh, or third um, talent that you're learning here. And it's easy to kind of like go cheap looking versus go more polished. We're here to make you look polished. I think another thing that I remind, because I allow myself a good 20 minutes for every guest, even though our interviews are four to five minutes long, that's because I feel like I'm tech support half the time. So just reminding them to bring their um, laptops up and level um, mm -hmm. so that we're not shooting up at people or shooting down. Mm -hmm. um, and then also a tip as you're interviewing people, it's a little weird, but you're sort of looking at, a, at them out of the corner of one of your eyes, most mm -hmm. likely your left, because they're on your left but you should be looking straight, like right at that camera straight ahead. Um, just because when they're taping, it's gonna, it's gonna look a little bit better, so. Oh, so can you go um, deeper into that and then I wanna jump to Harold about why you should be looking at, if you have a map, there's a green light next to where your camera's located, but why I'm looking that way versus looking down at the person down. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna see the top of my eyelid. So like right now, if I wanted to look at Sally, you can sort of see that I'm looking down at her because she's on the middle left of my screen. Mm -hmm. um, but if I was doing an interview with her and she were there, I would look like this, even though I'm sort of just seeing her here because now I'm directly looking at the person. The screen. At the screen, exactly, and looking out. Um, so that's one. Another thing is, is that I have no prompter. So <laughs> my producer likes to write really long intros and I'm like, that's not gonna happen. Um, so I remember it as much as I can, but the other trick that I've been doing is that, um, because I, I have not finessed the whole prompter thing. I know that people have come up with sort of like makeshift, uh, science project prompters, which is amazing. I have no time or patience for all that. I put it in a Word doc. I make it big. I slide my laptop back from me. I have my, um, selfie stand, um, and has a little remote to it. All right, so I take the remote out, I put the selfie stand there, and I put this so that my cell phone, I know that my camera is right, or I'm sorry, the lens is right there, right? Yeah. So I, when I put my selfie stick, when I put this in my selfie stick, I'm making sure that, that um, um, the lens for the camera is as close as possible to the computer, um, as close as possible to the actual um, words in my Word document. So sometimes you might catch me look down just a little bit because I can only lift this laptop so high. Um, mm -hmm. But I try to sort of look and look up so that it's not as noticeable. And that's helped a lot. Um, so if you have the selfie stick was like 14 bucks. I mean, it's nothing. It has a little built-in light if you charge it. Mine is not charged. Um, but that's been really, really helpful. Um, and one last thing before you go on, I will say too, is taping inside as much as possible. When this first started, I tried to get, you know, a little creative. We have a pond in the back and I was like, this is pretty. It looks like I'm not at home, like I'm in a park. Mm -hmm. It was fine, but the juice wasn't worth the, worth the squeeze on that. Like my boss didn't care, my producer didn't care. And I was like, why am I lugging all this stuff outside? Um, so that's one of the things that I learned very early is that, um, 
you know, less is more, especially right now in a pandemic, people don't care. They want to get, you know, the information that you're trying to give, make sure it's clean and nice and that's it. So gotcha. sorry, I rambled. No, you're fine. You gave a lot of information. I want to jump into Mr. Harold Fisher because most of his work is done audio wise and many people are in love with um, everything from podcasts to having their own shows and of course, audio reports for, for radio. Carol, can you talk to us about your day? Like, what is it that is happening? Because you have an entire show to get together. That's a lot. Of I do. And let me first, even before I say that, say, talk about that. Okay. Let me just, you know, shout out to, you know, everyone in this conversation who is still working and getting a check. That's a blessing. Yeah. Because as we know, there are many of our colleagues who are not. Sadly. Mm -hmm. And and so it's you know it's it's rough out there and so you know God bless everyone who is you know continuing to collect a check and stay healthy in this in this pandemic. So the, my day has really changed um, more than I could have ever imagined because you know I commute back and forth to D.C. or was commuting from Baltimore, so that's a hundred miles round trip every day, Monday through Friday. And I work from one to 9 p.m. My show is from seven to eight, it's on WHUR and Sirius XM. But what has happened is instead of working an eight hour day, I am working anywhere from 10 to 12 hours every day now. And that's the thing that has, has really, really changed because when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I reach over even before my eyes are open and I grab my phone to figure out what I've missed in the morning or overnight, I should say. <laughs> and so that's been, and you know, if I'm waking up at, at 8 a.m. and then you know, Cuomo decides that he wants to have a press conference at nine or, or Hogan decides that he wants to have a press conference at 10 or Muriel Bowser wants to have a press conference at 11. I mean, that, that's when my day starts. And I am, I, one of, when you talk about equipment, one of the things, uh, there's a recorder, an app that I use on my phone. And so I will take my laptop because, of course, one of the wonderful things about the Internet is you can be everywhere now. And so if there is a, a press conference, I just record the press conference and I pull my bites from the press conference, which is really, really convenient. The downside is, of course, if I need to ask a question, I cannot. But there are a lot of reporters there that are asking the questions that I need. And while my show is an hour long, the news segment is about about seven or eight minutes and and I've got and I have to pull the full day. I write my entire newscast. And what has happened is that at at, at the station, um, I have software that I can literally put it in and I can edit it myself and I can play it during my show, even though I'm in studio and I have an audio engineer. And I have a producer who is also taking care of some of the other things for the uh, discussion part of the show, which is live and 45 minutes long. But now the, the difficulty is that I have to take my sound, edit it in my phone and email it to my audio engineer so that he can put it in what we call a cart, process it so that um, he can play the sound bites. But the other piece is, this is how I do it. This is thing. Okay, so bear with me. So this is a Comrex. I am. This is called a Comrex, and it is bulky. This piece comes out if necessary, and you can hook it on your belt for your for your Star Trek friends. It's about the size of the original tricorder on Star Trek. Okay, and I'm now I'm telling my age. Um, it is bulky, but it, it works. And this is the thing. If you've ever listened to, for example, National Public Radio, and there are people that they are talking to on other, in on other parts of the uh, country, and they sound like they're in the studio, that's the thing that allows me to sound as if I'm right there in the studio, even though I'm here. And I have my NFL 
headphones and a microphone, which allows me to gesture and write and, and do all of the other things that I'm doing. Meanwhile, I'm still up on Facebook and I'm up on Twitter in the event that our president says something interesting Excellent. during the course of, of my show. And then I can, because it's, it's all been coronavirus for the past two months. Carol, go back to the headphones. Go back to the headphones. Yes. Quick question. Why those headphones looking like you're in the sidelines at a football game versus some earbuds? Well, because uh, this microphone is better than those. Thank you. And they, and they are part of the Comrex. Gotcha. Okay. So they are married to this, and the headphones uh, also uh, prevent feedback and the like. And uh, so it, do it doesn't sound tinny like the, um, the, the iPod, iPod earbuds or something like that. And and I, wanted to, I wanted to pause them really quick. Same way I paused Elsa about where to look. Um, again, we're a professional organization. We're about journalism and for radio and for television. These are vital tips he's giving and Elsa are giving because um, true biz, you want to look like you still are doing your product. You just happen to be doing it from home. Otherwise, um, anybody can go and buy a mic and try it out. That's keeping your audio sounding a lot better than you being on, um, I don't know, a Skype call. Yeah, they, they, they are very, very serious about sound at WHUR. If it doesn't sound good, they don't want to use it. And, and not only do our managers police that, we also must self-police that information. Um, I, and I do, of course, have a news director. For Black Radio, we have a large news department there are three of us there there were four of us and we do uh, but that that person one of the people is no longer there but um it's the, the the difficult thing is just the massive amount of information i think that i have to consume i mean we all know as journalists that's part of it but now there is so much more information that i am consuming all day long and trying to uh, figure out what to put in this seven minute newscast in addition to, you know, I have conference calls with my news director. Uh, we also have to post on, on the WHUR website. We, um, the best thing is that the newscast, or not the newscast, but the insight segment, the discussion part is in a podcast that I don't have to put together. Um, I just have to post it once my audio engineer sends it to me. I was able to do it on my own at the station, but now there's always this extra step because I'm here and they are there. And one of the things that Elsa was talking about, which I thought was interesting, when this first happened, when Howard, because for those of you who don't know, Howard University owns the radio station. We are the parent, they are the, the parent company. And it's, it's a university. It's not like scripts or, uh, Tribune, where it's a media company, it is a, it's a university, and universities are not known to move quickly, but we are in this business. That's what we do. We move quickly, we move quickly. And so we moved out slowly. And, you know, just as people were trying to figure out how this was happening. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the first day I was supposed to broadcast from home, my engineer drove from D.C. to Baltimore, brought me this and the other equipment, and it did not work. So I had to drive back to D.C. because the show must go on. Did you all have those Comrexes in your building already? Because We mean, have two. Okay. But one was at, at my news director's house. Okay. And the so, um, question we had in the, in the chat, by the way, was... Uh, does the person on your interview that you were talking to, do they need to have one of those too? No, they're on the phone. So they're able to control the audio quality from where you are? Absolutely not. I have an, en <laughs> I have an engineer. I don't understand how this works. <laughs> right. He, and see, my engineer and my producer, still, they still come to work. Mm -hmm. oh. But they are only there for a few hours because my engineer, God bless, my, my, my engineer and my producer, both of them live within two miles of the radio station. Oh, okay, okay. I'm and back. so they literally, she works from home. Mm -hmm. She lives in Brooklyn near Catholic University. Mm -hmm. And Catholic University is one, exactly one mile from mm -hmm. Howard. 
And then my engineer, he lives somewhere near the university. And so they come in, he comes in at three. She comes in around five. But there are very, very few people at the radio station right now. The afternoon show producers, they're there. That makes sense. So yeah. drawing a line between, or parallel between what you and Elsa both said, you still have somebody doing post-production in a way to kind of clean up the sound and clean up the video. All right. Yes, it happens. Well, it's happening yeah. live. Yeah. It's happening live. Gotcha. Um, so FYI, I think a lot of you guys were on the call uh, that we had where we just kind of went impromptu. Uh, it was like last month's meeting where we started like, showing some of our toys and tricks of the trade. And um, there's also a video to that that we have posted on BABJ's page in case you missed it. And I did show you all. It won't sound like it's on WHUR, but it will sound clean. Uh, that was using the Skype call recorder. That would probably be like, you know, obviously we're not, you're, you yourself are not a radio station, but you want something to sound close to it, people. So with that call recorder, it just required you to get people to go onto Skype. And then it gave them the sound that they are in the same room with you. So like a lot of NPR stations use it because it's cheap. Yeah. The one last thing that <laughs> yeah. they've also started us um, with is that now we started something called HUR at home, where now I have to do inner Instagram interviews, Instagram live or whatever. Oh, that's cute. Uh, no, it's you know, not. You know, you know how to do that, right? Uh, well, I learned this week. I, I actually interviewed. You got too many friends to have a Teddy Riley moment now. Yeah, well, there's that. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> you know, the, the, the problem is I interviewed um, Michelle Singletary with the Washington Post, who is the columnist for The Color of Money. I love Michelle. Yeah, the money lady. She's great. And the interview was only 15 minutes, but I, you know, I think is, is that now our listeners and for people like, you know, um, you know, Elsa and others, people are in your house now. And that's something that I don't want to do. But it, <laughs> you, you're we set up a corner. That. We're going to talk about setting up your corner or setting up your set. I mean, Elsa that. said, she said, <laughs> my set. look at my set. This is a set for me. This is my work situation, by the way, just because I don't want my work people in my house. Right. But I obviously, y'all seen, I have other spots that I do stuff from. Let's but, do touch on that because I got a whole bunch of say. Let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> let's get this now. <laughs> Go, Elsa. Oh no, I I'm I do feel some sort of way about having the masses in my home. Your home is your home, right? It feels yeah. weird. I'm I'm glad that everyone's like, oh, did you set up that set? I'm like, no, it's my couch, and this is my actual art, and you know, like it's when you invite someone into your home, it's because you know them. This is my family. We're having a party. Here's a barbecue. It's like it's so it is very. Um, it's been a mind shift for me to give the viewers that much access. Yes, it's not a news show, so it is relaxed in that it is lifestyle. So they should feel comfortable, but I don't want them to be that comfortable, that familiar. It's a little much, you know, like we had a cooking segment. We have a, a kitchen set in our studio, but they were like, oh, you can go in your kitchen. I'm like, they don't need to see all that because now they've been in my living room, they've been in my kitchen, they've been in my deck. It's a little too much. Or but, frankly, your interviewee could take it to their kitchen. How about that? Nikki. Thank you. So that's Nikki, your Nikki, you know how much I like to cook, right? And so after I did the Instagram thing with Michelle uh, last week, you know, people were finding me on inbox and were like, oh, yeah, now I post my food on Instagram, but yeah. it's the food. I don't do full blown kitchen cooking lessons and now i've got folks saying oh can you cook for me and uh, yeah that's a no but um it, it, so yeah this is a whole different kind of thing and it takes some getting used to even outside of the the loss of privacy that that those of us found was the case when we entered into this business uh you know particularly for those of us who were who started in television well um i apologize to everybody that um, we lost karen for uh, the rest of the meeting. Um, but I, I did want to bring her on because she was doing pretty much like the one man band reporter thing from home. And if you guys have any questions about like how to make it work from home, um, I'm going to stand in for Karen just because back in the day, they called them bureaus when they made us take all that gear and stuff home and shoot everything. But real talk, that's why, every, that's why I was making all those jabs about, oh, look, they're taking their gear home and they're doing stories from their house. 
and they're cutting video from their house. Yeah. And what do they, what do they call it now? Spectrum. Spectrum now used to be Time Warner before. Um, all of those stations, we were putting in full page graphics, lower thirds, all that stuff yourself. Yeah, all of that. So that's why I'm like, I'm a resource if you got questions about that, but I want to like make sure you didn't feel like I had, uh, we had lost that aspect of the conversation too, because I know most of you guys on here, you probably don't have your own show, but you probably are being asked to turn audio stories, uh, television stories, and well, video stories in the same, so. And so, you know, and I have got a podcast too, and that's been different because typically our producer would come to um, Eden's house, I'd go there and we'd all tape a person, but we are social distancing and we're not doing that. So um, that's why I was interested to hear what you were doing, Harold, is that, um, I, you know, I'm a novice. No one's paying me for this podcast, not yet. Um, so, but I'm just trying to keep it going because consistency is key. So we're on, I don't know, episode 10 or something like that. So we launched like right as Corona was hitting. So we we're like, oh, okay, perfect timing. But I say all that to say is that we've been doing Zoom um, because all of a sudden we have guests. Typically we don't have guests. It's just been me and Eden. Um, and then I've just been finessing it because again, this is not my forte. I am not a sound engineer. I want it to sound good, but I'm trying to make it work. So I take, I tape it on zoom and then I put it into final cut. Then I disable the video. Then I mess with the audio levels. I export it as a MP3 and then I just hope it does what it does. Um, again, that's not the way to do it, but I think in this time and era, you got to make it work how you can make it work as long as it's sounding okay or looking okay. Um, but Nikki hit the nail on the head is that our stuff still has to be far and above what Joe Schmo with a camera on YouTube is doing, you know, like it still has, there has to be able, there has to be a marketable difference between the professionals and just anyone with a camera. Um, this is a good time because it sort of levels the playing field. I think that the cream rises to the top, um, but it's also something not to take for granted just because we are the professionals. Um, and, and just to kind of piggyback on that, even outside of the quality, and I think everyone, um, no matter what your job is, whether it's television or radio, or if you're in PR, or if you are in media relations, this is when you have to get it done even when you don't know how to get it done. Because for two days, uh, this is some inside baseball. Oh my God, there's a black man with a mask. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Forgive me, I'm sorry. Um, the um, Brothers got to be careful out there these days with these masks, but that's a, that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Howard University lost its internet. So that meant oh. this <laughs> did not work. Wow. wow. So um. what I had to do was I had to record my newscast on this. Fortunately, one of the producers in the afternoon, who happens to be one of my frat brothers, <clears throat> he, I was, he had a hot spot. So I, I was able to email my track and my sound bites to him. And then he put them on a flash drive, handed them to my audio engineer in another part of the building. And then he pulled them off the flash drive and edited my newscast. And I did my newscast, I did the, the insight segment, the discussion port, part, portion of the show mm -hmm. on my home phone. Now, you know, I, yes, I have a home phone because I, I was gonna ask a landline, yeah, a room? I, I know, how about that? But wow. see, here's the thing, my home, I have, I haven't used the home phone, it's only there for my security system. I had two of them, one in my bedroom and one here in the dining room that I never use. So because we know whatever can go wrong will go wrong, mm -hmm. I brought the one in my, from my bedroom, I brought it downstairs and halfway through the program, the battery died live. And my producer had to call me. So she called me back and I picked up the other phone and I finished the program. This is, this is about, you know, make sure that you are ready so you don't have to get ready. 
know. I mean, you, you just really, you know, I talked to my boss afterwards and she said, I don't even see how you pulled that off because everything that could have gone wrong was going to go wrong. And so even, and sometimes, you know, quality may have to suffer just to make sure that you can get it done. It's like, you know, Snowmageddon, you know, if you can't get to work, get to work anyway. And, and that's, and I think that's kind of where it, you know, that kind of, that's kind of where it puts us. Well, I'm glad you guys are offering up like really professional how to's because I mean, that's the most important part to have that knowledge base. Otherwise, you're just going to go to what you know. And I wouldn't be surprised if somebody, if they're, if that had happened to them to like go and, okay, Google voice that bad boy. Like there's, you just try to like, what do you call it, MacGyver it or something like real fast to make it work. I wanted to make sure that Maria Morales, who had her hand patiently up, um, she has a question. Unmute yourself. Uh, I'll unmute you. I'll unmute. Okay. Hi. 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 Uh, and hi, Harold. Nice to meet you both. Um, I had a question. Well, um, and this is just general, either one of you can answer. But uh, Elsa, you showed the two box lights. I know Nikki has those box lights. Um, the box lights versus the ring. Yeah. That's the first question. So, and then the sorry, second question is uh, Harold with the headphones. And any of you can answer, do you feel that you need headphones if you're doing, uh, like you all know, I do Facebook Live shows and things like that. Do you feel that that's needed for that? Thank you. Elsa, you can go first. Um, for the YouTube show that I had, we used both. We had the ring light um, because in the ring light, we had our camera, which was like a um, digital camera. So it was video and um, stills. So that was in the center of the ring light. I asked for that initially, but there would be no way for my phone. It wasn't conducive for a phone to be in the ring light. So that's the only reason I didn't have it. But once I um, just got these two lights, I realized I didn't need it. Um, the ring light also does that ring light weird yeah. thing with the eye thing. It looks like googly googly. I don't really like that. Um, I think it lights you well, but for me, it throws me off with the eyes all the time. Like I, I just personally don't like it. Um, so you mean it messes with your eyes? Like, no, like you see like, a circle in their eyes. Like you see weird. Look, look like a cat. You look, yeah. You look like a um, like one of those uh, Japanese cartoons. Yeah, the animes. Yeah, I mean it's not bad. I think people have gotten used to it because a lot of people use it. But you'll see it. But for me, it's just if I can get around, and I wear contacts too, so I think it makes it worse. Um, I'm not anti. I've used it before. I also feel like if you do not have enough room to do the big box lights, that circle light is what you want because that will take care of everything. It's great for small spaces. Yes. And um, I like the fact that it evenly lightens up your face so you don't have to be a lighting pro. Right. To know that you look great. Just look straight into the middle and you can't, yeah. you can't mess it up. Exactly. Um, I did want to offer a warning though with the ring lights and just a reminder for men and women that lighting emphasizes everything. So you've seen like when you had kids and you took them to a dance recital, if they didn't have makeup on, well, this is that's weird. It washes them out. But as close as you're going to be into like the camera and stuff like that, if you have a lot of lighting going on there, we see everything. So if you're mm -hmm. anti makeup or you're anti the shape up or whatever you can do to make yourself look best in this uh, Armageddon situation that we're in, just know that everything is going to come across every yeah. darkness, every wrinkle, every pimple, every scar from a pimple. We see everything. Yeah, I think with me, obviously, I have to cake on a lot of makeup. It's part of the job. Um, but even then what I've noticed is that I'm taping way closer to my face, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, if before I could just sort of slam on makeup and then go in studio and it's not a really big deal. Now I have to be precise. If this line is not right, y'all going to be like, look, she got a crooked line or her lash coming off is like, she, could, you wouldn't be able to see that if I were in studio because it's further away here. There's no, you know, you can't keep it real. You got to keep it very polished because people will see it. I've seen it. I've looked at it on air afterwards and been like, yeesh, not tomorrow. We fix that. You know? come, come, look, coming, coming from the, the, the post high definition. Uh, <laughs> 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 Get 
80. She's 80 as hell. Like, <laughs> some of us had to be raised on heavy makeup on purpose, man. So, yes, Mac was my look. friend when I was in TV. Let me trust me. Lord. Uh, you know, cause, because like my mother said, you know, if you're ugly, you're ugly. I mean, that's all you got, <laughs> all jokes aside. But um, on the lighting thing, one other thing, if you're, if you, and I'm silly, if you have the resources uh, to get box lights, if your station or your organization is doing that, fine. I used to be a still photographer uh, back in the pre-digital days. And so um, a friend of mine, uh, who, uh, Misha Green, she is the DC editor of the Afro-American newspaper. And she was doing these podcasts and Misha is a darker sister. And, and I mentioned it to her and she said, yeah, they're gonna send me a light. And, but she said she didn't know when that was coming. And I said, okay, tell you what, this is what you do. Grab a sheet of paper, hold it, and put a rubber band around a light. If the light is, is pointing up, put it around here, real cheap, and it works, and it diffuses the light. Also, if you have, even if you have a thin napkin or cloth napkin or, or handkerchief or something like that, and I'm, I've seen the ring lights, I've never used them, but the way to keep that, that thing out of your eye is to put it over the light another cheap way to do it. You can light yourself without having to spend all of that money or wait for your station to do all of that. Light, you know, light is light. You just have to kind of play with it. Just if, know the ring light though. You can't put anything over it's it. It's hot? Well, no, not that it's hot, hot is that your, ah, right, okay. whatever you're recording is in the center. Aha, uh -huh. see, like I said, I've it, never- They made it foolproof. Honestly, you can't really mess this up. You just put the camera, you know, put your phone there and boom, now you're like studio lit. With yeah, the unless you, unless, you unless like Elsa said, you have that thing in your eye. I don't particularly. I think that it's a me thing. Most people have gotten over it. I just We've don't. Gotten, know. We, we conditioned it. ourselves to see it. We're kind of used to it now. Um, Maria, what was your second question? Yeah, about the headphones. Um, if you are if you are doing video, um, Facebook Live, whatever, um, if you should have headphones on. So these headphones are specifically for my broadcast when i don't use them they are not separate from the comrex that is it, that's part of it when i've done the the instagram the the instagram interviews i literally just take my phone and just set it on my computer because i, I don't have a stand because i never had to do that before this and i wasn't going to pay for the stand and and it works just fine, but I use the speaker on the phone. There, there's no need to do it. But again, it may not be visually uh, pristine if you have to have these things in your ears. But again, if your managers or what have you don't mind, then that's kind of the way, I mean, network does it. Because a lot of times people are ta either talking from home or they're talking to people like uh, Katera, she has the earpieces. I've seen those on, on network interviews and if, and if they don't have any problem with it not looking pristine then i really wouldn't worry about it but for my phone it works just fine but those headphones are specifically for the comrex okay Thank um, you. the next question we have came from enid um i don't know is your, is your audio if not yeah, okay. my question is more, um, let me say, of course, you guys know I'm in public relations, but I know a lot of journalists and someone I actually mentor works for a major network. And two days ago, her uncle died of COVID-19 and her aunt is sick. You know, that said, then you have Stephanie Rule. I mean, you guys were just talking about how you get, you know, what you do to set boundaries within your homes. I'm curious because it's your business. I don't have, I mean, you know, I do help work with healthcare, but I can step away and watch a Netflix movie. I don't have to be on the air at one o'clock and, you know, something happens emotionally. What do you guys do to prepare yourself? I mean, daily, because this isn't something you can literally just separate yourself from at, at will, as, you know, some of us on this call can do. You mean emotionally? Yeah, emotionally or even to give yourself a break. 
So that's such an excellent question. And you know my boss, Renee Nash at WHUR. This, over the past week or two, has been part of the discussion that we have had during our daily news call. Sometimes it's a longer discussion, you know, three or four minutes, and sometimes it's just a mention. Um, I think everyone deals with these things in, you know, in different ways. Uh, you know, I am a, you know, I'm a person of faith, and so I, I am concerned, but I'm not worried. Um, and that goes back to what I said in the beginning about still getting a check. And I think if I, if I weren't, I would probably be more worried than just concerned to put you know, a fine point on it. There are days when, and not frequently, but for example, on the weekends, the first couple of weekends, we had to be up and ready for live hits and to post on the internet. That has kind of slowed down a little bit. And so, yes, uh, I will, you know, me and my girlfriend Alexa here, um, you know, we listen to music, you know. Just my Alexa on. <laughs> yeah, Alexa, stop. Um, see. But, and then there are, you know, there are plenty and plenty of movies and, and things that I can do. Uh, as a news junkie, this continues to fascinate me every day. And so I don't pull away from it very, very much. Uh, I may pull away from it for about six hours a day where I, where I do watch a movie or I do get in the kitchen and I just cook. And my scale has reminded me that I've been doing a little bit too much of that. Uh, but other than that, it, it doesn't bother me that much. And I think the other thing is, and I will say this, and this is part of the conversation also, we all have friends who are extroverts, who are we see them on Instagram. Yes, the, the Nikki males of the world, they love to be in the club, at the bar, wherever they're doing, you know, turning up. Um, I'm a homebody. And so being at home does not bother me. And I, I mean, you know, other than going grocery shopping and doing everything else, you know, I like my little house and I like my own company. And so I'm fine with it. You know, certainly connecting with, you know, my daughter. I haven't seen my daughter physically in two months. And she's graduating from Howard University next month and my heart is breaking because she will not walk. None of them will. They'll be getting it in the mail. And so that's, I think that's where it gets to me emotionally. I'm, I, I've seen my mother and my father and my stepmother, you know, I, they're great, they're wonderful. And I have seen them, they stand on the porch, I stand on the walkway. But other than that, it, it hasn't you know, bothered me. One other thing I will say about that, which I think is really fascinating, uh, the Today Show did an interview with somebody, some dream specialist and today, and they were saying that people are having really vivid dreams and because they're, work, they're working at home or they're staying at home. And I must say that that, that has really you know, happened to vivid, strange, weird, whatever you want to call them. And she was explaining that yeah, your sleep cycle is longer, you're at home, and, you know, your commute is much shorter, you know, from the living room to the bedroom now. So, yeah. I want to give Elsa a chance to answer that as well. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think what Ina is talking about is very important, the work-life balance, the, I hate that cliche, but it's the truth. And now that work has come home, mm -hmm. how are you, um, I guess, balancing? Because you, you're pretty good at telling people about boundaries, you know? Yeah, because I had to learn the hard way. I mean, I literally just ran when I left just now is because my daughter bumped her head and was screaming and I was like, really? I can't hear all that. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, when I left the business, um, I left after about nine years in um, and it was because I had already had, and Nikki knows this, I had already had sort of a, it just took a toll. I mean, my personality is typically more upbeat. Um, so to be covering fires and murders all the time and plane crashes, and that was my day to day. And I could not turn off. I, I, was, I was aware of, obviously, we as journalists are vessels, right? We're supposed to just tell the story and just, it, we're a conduit. Um, but I would come home and it would be heavy over and over and over again. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. My now husband, but boyfriend at the time, he said, you know, like, you don't have to do this. And I was like, oh, 
no one ever told me that. Because when you're a journalist, you don't have a plan B. You're just a journalist. Like, you, like that's what you went to school for. That's what you want to do. Um, so I say all that to say is that when I stepped away, my job was working from home. I went into um, tech marketing for Yelp. Our headquarters was in San Francisco. I was launching this area, the Baltimore area. So I covered basically everything between DC and Delaware. Um, and I would go to San Francisco once a quarter and I worked remotely. So at the time I had no kid, <laughs> it was just a husband. And so I didn't mind sort of working around the clock because I could wake up early in the morning, I could work out and I could whatever, start my work day at 11. So if I was working 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., I didn't really care because one, I enjoyed what I was doing. I was at home, I was in yoga pants, I didn't have any makeup on, it was great. This is not that, <laughs> this is a different thing. Um, so my deadlines are not the same as many of yours because again, I'm not in news, I'm in lifestyle. So I can tape things beforehand. Um, but what I did, because I know that I can get overwhelmed, um, is I had to tell my producer and my boss, like, look, I will do three heavy days, but I can't be doing this every single day where I'm caking on makeup and going down to my living room. Um, so let's make my Monday, Wednesday, Friday, heavy back-to-back -back interviews. Um, so I might do minimum of four, I might do a maximum of 10, and we will crank out probably 30 interviews in that time. I will tape all my ins and outs for the show, um, any sort of promos or teases that we have to do. I'm about to shoot a commercial remotely. How that's going to work, I don't know, but we're going to figure it out. Um, but I had to let them know that my Tuesday, Thursday, I need to actually homeschool my child. <laughs> that's a priority. And, you know, and I did not feel bad about that because we're all in the same boat. They got kids at home too, that they want to be just as smart as I want my kid to be. And I wasn't going to feel bad about the fact that I was homeschooling while quote unquote on the job because they see me sending text messages at midnight and 1am and 3am. I'm like, Harold, like when you wake up, that phone is right there. It's not necessarily a good thing to do but it is there. Um, Nikki sort of spoke to the point of something that I've been trying to reclaim in probably the last week and a half. I was very good about it before the quarantine, yep. but that was starting out the day with time for myself. I've got a Peloton, typically I get on that. I don't have a lot of time, but at least 15 minutes because for me, that's like my coffee in the morning. I need the endorphins. When I don't do that, that's when you end up like I was <laughs> a couple of days ago where I'm not clear-minded, I'm not focused, I'm overwhelmed. I have a I don't get anxiety, but this situation has introduced it to me. Um, so <laughs> it's sort of knowing the things that, um, that we did to take care of ourselves beforehand. Mm -hmm. We might not be able to do those same things, um, but there's a way to finesse it and figure out how to do it. So whereas I would go to solid core or whatever four times a week, I can't go there now, it's shut down. You know, so I've got to figure out something else that's going to give me that same um, mental clarity. And it's not easy. It, it really isn't. Um, I live at home. My husband's a personal trainer nutritionist, and I was still eating lint chocolates and candies and everything just trying to make it through. So um, it happens to the best of us, even when we know to do better. So I think just being patient with ourselves and realizing that this isn't just time at home. This is time at home during a crisis. So um, it's a different scenario, if that makes sense. If I may briefly add to that, one of the things this really reminds me of is uh, in the days and weeks after 9-11, but exponentially worse, mm -hmm. exponentially more severe, because for those of you who are old enough to remember that, um, and, and I'm talking old enough to remember it as professionals, when when the plane struck the tower, we had just gotten off the air with Fox 45, and then we went back on the air for 10 minutes later, mm -hmm. and we were on the air. We had just finished a, a three and a half hour show, morning show, and we went back on the air, and we were on the air until about 2.30 in the afternoon, and then our, our time at home was truncated, of course, because we had to come back instead of coming back at 2.30 in the morning, we had to return to the studio at midnight. And then we worked from 5 a.m. on the air at 5 a.m. until, gosh, until noon 
every single day for almost two weeks. And so I never really had, I didn't have a chance to mourn, to process until two weeks after uh, September 11th. This is different in that there is, so, as I said, there's so much more information and so much more to process. And this is a, a slow burning tragedy in that, you know, the numbers just increase every single day. And so it has taken me a really, really long time to process. And as I said, as, and my daughter is a type one diabetic. And so she had to really stay in one place because she had one of those underlying conditions. And I think it, that's when it kind of hit me emotionally that I haven't seen my child in two months. Mm -hmm. And so find what it, whether, whether you, if you're a person of faith, you know, you, you know, reading your scripture or whatever it happens to be, whether it's music, whether if you need to have a dance party with your girlfriends or your guy friends or what have you, watch your alcohol consumption. Why are you looking at me? I'm just looking. <laughs> That was my guilt that came out. Right, right. <laughs> I felt like he was looking at all of us. At this but um, <laughs> it, you know, and 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 watch how much you eat. I mean, like I said, I yeah. picked up some pounds here because of all of cooking. But you, but really take some time, even if it's just thirty to sixty minutes a day, just trying to figure out what's going on with you, um, because it'll it'll come out. Um, and you mentioned too, I, you know, I recently, I had a coworker that I worked with at WDKX in Rochester, New York, who um, just passed from COVID um, mm -hmm. maybe two weeks, two days ago, three days ago, at least that's when I found out. Um, and I found out the day after a friend of mine told me his father passed from COVID. Um, and that father um, was a friend of my parents. Um, so I've known him since I was 14. Um, I think in those moments, I hate to say it, sometimes being a journalist helps me still, even though I'm a host now, is that you feel it, but there can be a, not a wall, but there's sort of like a time that you allocate to feel it, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. because you know you got to get other things done. And you, you compartmentalize. Know you, you do. And so I know it will hit me. There's been moments where it's hit me. But I'm also like, I've got, what interviews do I have to do? Is this a Skype interview or is this a Zoom interview? Is this a phone interview? Are my lights working properly? I only got five minutes to do. Did I deep condition my hair? Did I do, you know, little things that don't seem important, but they all go into it. And so, and you're constantly going. Um, I've picked up a couple of books. I've done a lot more spiritual work. I'm just going to be completely forthcoming. Um, and that's been helpful is where I'm like, okay, I'm going to read um, a chapter of this book in the mornings if I have time. And if I don't, I'm writing it or I'm reading in the evening. Um, I started a gratitude journal during this pandemic, sort of on accident, um, because one of the books was saying, um, just write out 10 things that you're grateful for and why, because. Not just, oh, I'm grateful for to be able to work from home, but I'm grateful to be able to work from home because I'm able to still support my family or I still have healthcare or whatever it is, you know, or sometimes it might not even be that big. I'm grateful that today it's actually sunny because yesterday it rained or I'm thankful that it rained today because, you know, my flowers are going to look great in a week. Whatever it is, is it sounds silly, but it has helped me exponentially. And I feel like when those moments come, when you find out that there's a loved one that's passed or, um, Maybe it's not even that, you know, that severe. It might just be like, this is day, what, 60 bazillion that I've been in the house. And it's just sort of like, I just want to get out. Um, I think putting, having it written down and being able just to say thank you for those things to whatever you believe in, God, the universe, Jesus, whatever it is, it brings you back to self so that you can process this. Because as journalists, we have to go, go, go all the time. Um, and there is no time to pause unless we make the time to pause. Yeah, I, um, I feel awkward asking a tech question after all this, because this is really a great- We probably need it, Nikki. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to make sure I'm serving my people here. Um, so it is a quick technical question. Um, one of our people, Dave, still had his hand up. Dave, yeah. Unmute. Oh, okay. There you go. Hey, well, listen, thank you all for, for, for all of that, because um, 
that actually may have helped a lot more than a lot of the technical stuff. But um, we were talking before, and actually I have a sort of a follow-up question about something else. But you were talking before about lighting, and this is the light that I got a couple years ago. Um, and I actually got it because of, uh, from, you know, suggested from one of the meetings we had a couple years ago about getting technical equipment. And I'm a, I'm a lifelong print guy, so this, was all, this has all been a process for me when I'm doing things like uh, Zooms and Skypes and, you know, there's like a little podcast I'm starting to do now. Is that good enough to do the things that, that we want to do? Or do we need to have like the big, um, uh, the, the big box lights um, that we talked about uh, earlier in this or the ring lights or, or things like that? Would something just this small, it's like the size of a, size of a cell phone, would that be good enough? Depends on the room that you're in. And it depends on your background. So if your background is light enough, perhaps. Um, but it's, it's like how much space are you filling and how dark is the background? Like what are you competing with visually? I'll let Harold, Harold's a photographer, I am not. So what do you yeah, think? Yeah, so here, here's the thing, and, and this, is, this is particularly the case for, you know, for pen, print people who years ago I would have said who know nothing about television or visuals, but the reality is, we're all in the same boat yep. because of social media and and multimedia. I tell people all the time that you need to light the subject. If the subject is you, light the subject. Be careful about having light back here mm -hmm. without lighting yourself here because then you will be in silhouette. Let us look not not to pick out anybody, but <clears throat> class, look at this. Mickey. <laughs> they, they, they quickly get on camera. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Hello. Jessica, Jessica yeah. has has light. Let Jessica don't run away. Jessica has light <laughs> coming from the curtain, and she has light over her other shoulder. As a darker sister, her the subject is not lit, so we cannot see her. As well. Even if it was a white dude, I've had plenty of white dudes that they yeah, same thing. the minute you no. put in a window. I mean, in front of a window. When yeah. I say I'm tech support, that's the thing is that a lot of times our guests. And sorry to interrupt, but our, a lot right. of times our guests, our guests are not us. At least we have like a working knowledge where we're trying to finesse it. They, for them, they don't know, and I'm just happy that they're trying. So a lot of times they just think like, oh, this is a pretty window. Let me sit right in front of it. I was like, yo, I cannot yep. see you. Yeah, I mean, we can, and this is, that's a great question, David, because we can just look. If you look at uh, Shanti, Shanti is, has that what they call the Egyptian, because she's lit on one side of her face because she's darker on one side than she is on the other side. The reason my light is even is because I, I'm sitting in front of a window facing me. And so, you know, whether you've got a light in front of you or natural light, which is always the best, natural light is always the best uh, for this kind of work. Um, when in television, they used to light us and we had to learn how not to do this when we had, you know, that light in front of us when we were doing stand-ups, which is very, very difficult to do. But I don't know what kind of, you must be sitting, are you, are you sitting in front of a light, David? Or I'm window? sitting in, I'm facing a window. There you go. You look but, great. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you look, you know, black, you know, black don't crack. So uh, that's, so that's the thing. That's what I would suggest because the light is not harsh. It's very natural. Mm -hmm. But just be careful because you notice above my head, this is my kitchen. That's a light in the ceiling, but it's not directly behind me because it's not overpowered by the light in front of me. You know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because there's a ceiling light right behind me that just out of habit, that's what I turn on sometimes. Yeah, when I, do I wouldn't stuff do that and, because so it's don't do right that. behind you. Yeah. Right. And okay. also you have to look at the color of your walls. My walls here are colored walls. Mm -hmm. So if I were to do it here and the, and the walls in my dining room where I do the Instagram thing that they are a kind of a warm pumpkin cut. Don't you love words? It's yeah. a warm <laughs> pumpkin. And, and so it's so descriptive. That's great. Man. You, should, you should write for a living. Man. I did go to Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but all y'all immediately chimed in. We knew that was coming. 
see? Okay. <laughs> that for you. Uh, there you go. <laughs> but again, even with the pumpkin colored walls behind me, the light that I used was reflected off of the paper. Mm -hmm. And so it lit me, but you could also see my, you know, my living room and, you know, the whole bit. So it did. So, you know, just, just make sure that you are lit. Mm -hmm. So right now I just turned off my lights so you guys could see mm -hmm. the difference with that. What I've got in here is cross light. So in the kitchen, there's some light. In the front of the house, there's some light. There's also an overgrown bush, so I'm not really getting all the light. But you can sort of see, like I'm more lit here than I am on this side. Yeah. Is it horrible? No. Could I do an interview like this? Sure. So if you don't have a light, you can't get your hands on lights. It does take a little bit of time to get on um, Amazon. Doing it, honestly, the way David did it over the way that I'm doing it is, is preferable. Um, so where you're sort of looking out the window. If you have a cross light and it's a sunny day, great. Do it this way if it is actually coming through. But the, the thing you have to worry about that is if the sun goes behind a cloud all of a sudden, then you're screwed. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're better off at least with David's way is that if that happens, it's a uniform change as opposed to now I've got some creepy thriller things going on. <laughs> it happens. And again, we're going for a polished look for, for like a professional reason. Mm -hmm. So I'm about to get these lights again. Bye. Okay. So, um, I don't want to be a woman who lied to you guys about the time. Do we have other questions for our panel? They have been so awesome to stick around with us for a couple minutes. Time, where's anybody going? They're staying at home. But I respect your time. I told y'all an hour. I don't want y'all to say, Nikki had me on here for two hours talking about lighting. So I got my daughter sure. bumped the mess out of her head, too. I gotta go. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to be honest. I, I told y'all an hour. But no, if, if you're free, if you're free and available, I just wanted people to feel comfortable because I got an ice pack. She'll be all right. <laughs> I think poor Brandon babe. had a question. Yeah, poor babe. Brandon. <laughs> I'm looking, looking, looking. No hands. Brandon did. Brandon. 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 Yes, please, Brandon. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Hey, thank you guys for uh, being here and for sharing all your knowledge during this um, crazy time. I had a question for Harold. Um, for doing interviews with um, Strictly Audio, because I have friends that do podcasts and stuff like that, and they always using uh, Skype to record their audio and stuff like that. Have you ever had to record an uh, interview yet using Zoom or Skype? And what, uh, what um, software did you use to edit with? I haven't because it's audio. And this is, this is the advantage. I've, I've done a few. This is the advantage of having a home phone because my home phone has a speaker on it. And, and so all I, and the speaker is pretty loud. And it's, I mean, it's so basic that I will pull up the software and I will record it. I will record and just hold the phone to the speaker. And then, and it's, it's pretty clean. I mean, you know that it's not a in person, but I would recommend if you're doing audio, don't work the, the, so the software that I have, it's called TW recorder. And, it's, and this, is an, this is an iPhone, it's called TW Recorder. It is free and it takes a little getting used to to edit, but it works really, really well. And so if you have, if it's just audio, go ahead and pull it up on Skype or Zoom. For example, in talking to you, if I wanted to record it, um, I'll tell you what, this is, this is interactive. So let, let, let us do this and see how this works. So, um, Brandon, tell me a little bit about yourself. I am a senior at Bowie State University. I will be graduating virtually June 26th, on June 26th at 3 p.m. I'm, I'm a broadcast journalism concentration with hopes and aspirations to be a sports anchor and reporter. I also have experience doing radio. I also have experience doing digital editorial from my internship that I had this past summer with NBC Sports Group. Actually, wonderful. And if you're interested, I have a beautiful young lady um, who is also graduated from Howard that you may want to meet. I'm sorry, uh, she would not be happy. Okay, so. Uh, oh, where is that? Like that? 
That was so long. <laughs> that was like really good. It took a turn. We need to be doing that. Look, and look, and matchmaker, look. matchmaker. <laughs> Is that what we doing? Who you got for me, Harold? <laughs> and then his side time. Yeah, and, she, and, look, and she has, and she has no grammar deficit. <laughs> We're not in there, like just lie in there. I know. <laughs> um, here you go. Let's let's see how this sounds. Um, Brandon, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm a senior at Bowie State University. I will be graduating virtually June 26th. Okay, as well as concentration, we have some aspirations to be a sport. How did that sound? It sounded it good. Back it a sounded little. good. It dropped a little bit. In between, but it, it sounded good for the most part from what I heard. Yeah, it it, it cool. sounded the drop may have been in, mm -hmm. in this, but for me you could still hear it. I could I could literally if I did a segment, you know, that I wanted to put on my show, I could edit that, <clears throat> excuse me, email it to my audio engineer and it would come out great. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes you have to you know, as Nikki said, sometimes you have to MacGyver it. And I've, I've, used, I've used that software. Uh, I've been using that, that software since the first time I think I used it was at the Democratic National Convention when Obama was running in 2008. And, um, and I used it for, for Kaylin McC um, McCain. And yeah, I've been, I've been using that software now for for quite some time. It, it works very, very well. Brandon, I will say that if you are interested in using Zoom for podcasts, again, I don't know if you were on earlier when I said that I was doing that. Um, I'm doing it in part because I like to see people, um, mm -hmm. even if I'm only taking the audio. Um, I'm just used to that format because I'm used to TV. Um, so what I've been doing is recording it that way and then putting it in Final Cut, disabling the video, and then exporting it after I've cut everything. It actually makes it easier for me to cut too, because sometimes I'll remember somebody's expression before I remember what they said. Um, so I'll cut it as if it's video, and I don't care about jump cuts because I'm disabling the video afterwards, and then I'll export it as an MP3. I send that to my sound guy, and then hey, I'm on mute. the I'm echo on mute. out of it a little bit. Um, he can't do it all the time. I've noticed that um, I have an external mic, my uh, co-host, she has an external mic, but the guests that we've been having, we've been interviewing some comedians lately, mm -hmm. don't have all that. Um, so they might sound a little more hollow, but because two out of three voices sound very clear, it, it's forgivable, if that makes sense. Um, it's not the best, but it ain't the worst either. So if it's, and it's what I know to do, like Harold knows this software. I'm not learning anything new right now. I cannot. So I'm just know, taking right? what I know. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just taking what I know and just trying to make it work. So um, yeah, if that is something that, you know, I will say that Zoom quality for sound is better than Skype quality for sound. Yeah. Do you not uh, know why? Yeah, I've been impressed with what I've heard through Zoom compared to Skype. Yeah. And you will have moments where it might glitch out, but I can see or hear that in real time. And I'll just tell my co-hosts and whoever we're interviewing, like, stop, we're going to repeat that. And then, but you have to be mindful and be listening in real time because Zoom will glitch. It'll just happen. So you want to make sure you don't miss anything. Oh, yeah. okay. The idea okay. is to make it as clean from the beginning so that you can't really do that whole stupid phrase of we'll fix it all in post. Right. Some things cannot be fixed in post. Yeah. And I know it's hard when you're talking to an interview, you're excited about getting the interview but sometimes you have to beg them to control their environment around them. The same way I was talking about in the beginning of this, I was muting everybody until folks got comfortable and used to, we can't step on each other and yell out and frankly, make sure that your environments weren't uh, a little cantankerous. Because uh, normally the person that's driving, if you haven't noticed, the person that's driving in a car on a Zoom call tends to be the one that cuts through everybody. And it's because their microphone is the most sensitive. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, it never makes sense. And that poor person is so busy driving, they don't realize that they're the one that's disrupting a, a Zoom call. But if you're interviewing somebody and they're like, yeah, I got a couple of minutes and they're always on the go, you almost have to beg them to, can you do me a favor? And can you just kind of go sit somewhere <laughs> quiet? 
So it doesn't sound like I hear all of outside in this call. Getting them in front of a video camera of sorts, like, you know, doing the Skype call, doing the Zoom call, that makes them sit their behinds down. That makes your interview way better because they are focused on the interview and not trying to multitask everything. There's Karen. She made it back. She's back? Is she back? Yes, I did. I made okay. it. Okay. Hey, Karen. Hey. Did you have any, um, I know you went in and out. Did you have any um, gems of wisdom to share with the group about uh, working from home and making this reporter anchor thing work? Uh, yeah, I think um, Elsa pointed on a good topic um, toward the top of the hour when she was, uh, when you were talking about doing Zoom interviews and making sure that you, you know, sort of look directly at the camera and not at the person. Um, that's a really good point um, as well. I've had to tell my, the people that I've been interviewing, you know, just don't look down and make sure your laptop is at eye level, <laughs> right? So that's an important thing that was already mentioned. Um, I have not anchored yet from my apartment. That could change. I don't know. Um, so I've just been doing reporting and interviewing people and I have a small like living room, which a lot of us are, are working out of now. So I, uh, every time I'm on a Zoom call or if I'm on camera, I don't want it to make, I don't want it to look like I'm in the same position every single time. So you have to be creative in changing up your backdrops a lot. I don't know if that was talked about, not doing interviews from the same. You're better than me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> also, so, you get my couch, that's it. All you get is the couch. Karen, uh, that uh, the also has a, a nice picture behind her too. I'm impressed, Karen. I was just saying, like, nope, they, they get what they get. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can I'll move my uh, camera around. So what I can show you is um, kind of how I, I set this up. So like this large portrait behind me, if you can see that, that um, sometimes is one backdrop. I would sit in the in the middle of my living room with a chair. Um, and have that sort of in the background is one. Um, if you have a tree, <laughs> <laughs> the good old tree or a bookshelf or something like that. Um, I've also used um, my sofa. Let me turn this around. I've also used my sofa. And apparently, um, if you can see, a lot of people like the decorative pillows that I have. Um, you don't really see any of my kitchen. And something else that my... Um, web people at my job was able to do for me, if I need to do a stand up, if I don't want to leave my apartment, what they did was, I'll show you my, see my, that's my TV screen right there. And it has the WTHR logo on it. So they made me a graphic. It's, it's the same thing that they use in the studio. And um, they just sent me a um, photo of that. So I can just put that, into my TV and normally what I do is I put that TV on my kitchen countertop and I would stand next to it and just do a stand up that way as a different background. So that's just something different. Is that, that an HDMI cord from your laptop to it or are you it is. from your cell phone? It is. That is an HDMI card. Um, my personal laptop I'm using. Let me see. Okay. Bring this over a little bit more. I'll take this out here. So. so yeah, so I'm using my personal laptop here um, and just have an HDMI port connected to my television that shows um, cool. right there to make it a little bigger. So that's what I do. Yeah, um, and something else is, if you've seen the photo, so I have a deck <laughs> in my apartment and this works really, really well. Um, if, if you all haven't seen the photo, I uh, stand outside on my deck and I use my work phone to record myself. It's a uh, iPhone 10X is what they gave me. So I already have uh, like a tripod. I have my um, BABJ Chris. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the refrigerator? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I have my, um, this is an uh, eight inch ring light. I need to get a bigger one, but this works pretty well. Um, so this is an eight inch ring light that I have. Um, it comes in three different, I'll show you this, three different, hang on a second. 
Let me plug this in. And it plugs right into your um, laptop, if you want. And so it has three different settings. I just use the first setting, which is just white. There's a orange, there's a blue. So you can kind of play around with it a little bit. And um, you wear your glasses on air? Has the attachment for your phone, say again. Do you wear your glasses on air? I do not, no. Okay, I was gonna ask you about reflection with that. No. <laughs> Never mind. I've, I've learned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, and the light also helps if I'm sitting, uh, you know, if it's at night or something and I need more light, I just put this right um, above my laptop to sort of give me more lighting on my face. So that helps. So those are a, a couple of tricks that I've done just to, you know, switch up the background a little bit for TV purposes. <laughs> like between two burns and stuff up in here. I love it. <laughs> but you know what though? Okay, um, here's how it goes is that you have to repurpose almost every inch of your place if that's all you got. And if they're asking for it, you know, be a little bit more innovative with these stand-ups or show us something different. If you have managers like that, then what she's doing makes 100% sense. If you want to keep it to one area, like what I tell a lot of my clients, my video clients, that they get these interviews on, on um, CNN and C-SPAN and stuff like that, just have your little backdrop and corner set up and you know where to go. You know how to turn that light on and don't mess it up. It's an easy go-to. Karen answered a lot of the questions I had about um uh about backdrops but you nick you kind of touched on it a little bit should we sort of um uh sort of identify one's place that we always want to uh you know do these things from like just pick a spot or, or pick a cam pick a camera angle or 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 you know should we focus more on the look or the the, the quality of the audio you know so there won't be like echoes in a larger space should we move around to like a living room or a dining room or should we focus it on like a, like in my case, there's a spot where there's a lot of bookcases and things on the wall, things like that. I mean, is there any one uh, factor or dynamic we should, we should focus on when we're picking uh, a place to have backdrops? I will say um, you don't want your backdrop to compete with, with you. Um, so like right now I've got artwork and you're seeing more artwork than you typically would see normally. I do it so that there's something behind me, but not that you're like, oh, what's she got going on? You know what I mean? Like you, you want just something that you know that something's there. Um, my husband has been doing some interviews remotely as well. Um, he's a personal trainer nutritionist, so he's been doing that. But one of the things that I was telling him is that we, we do have a lot of art on this floor. And, and one of the things that he shot there was like a wooden sculpture that was sort of like over his shoulder accidentally. And that's just where he was. So I was like, don't do that again, because that is competing with you. Um, so I think books are benign. No one's really noticing that little knickknacks are normally benign. Um, artwork, as long as you're only seeing like a little corner of it. Um, Karen, her artwork you see there and her plant in the back or her tree. Um, <laughs> so, um, it is a big plant though. Um, but it, as long as it's not competing with you and you're well lit. Um, for Karen's bosses, it sounds like they want her to have different looks. My boss actually said the different, you know, he said the exact opposite, but that's, it's a preference. So it depends on who it is that you're working for and whatever organization. Um, so those are my, just make sure you're well lit and your background is not competing with you. And then in terms of if you're getting a secondary location or a third, I think that's really dictated by the organization or a company that you're working for. Can I also, I, I wasn't going to do this, but since Karen did it, I, I'll say this, um, the MTV Cribs foolishness, but anyway, when I did my, um, my Instagram video i was sitting actually this is my living room and it looks something like this although i think i was a little you know i don't know i was a little further away but and the artwork again i'm squatting now but it looks something like that and what we we do see especially for some of the networks is you see pictures of family in the background and i was you know i had the lamps you know kind of framing my face 
And that worked. The the artwork actually, you know, I mean it's it's a uh, it's an abstract it's an abstract nude, but my head was in front of it, so you really couldn't tell. And even if it wasn't, you wouldn't be able to see what it was. Uh, but when we were doing the HUR at home, my boss specifically said the interview is not. It's, it was informal. And so she wanted something that was casual. And that's about as casual as it's going to get. You know, if you have pictures of, you know, family or what have you in the background. But again, and I think Elsa, you know, spoke about this. I just don't want a whole lot of folks, you know, up in my house like that unless, you know, post COVID, I invite you in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I know Elsa's like, this guy's crazy. But no, I agree. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a set. It's like you have to look at your home like a set. And it's not the entire yeah. house that you need. <clears throat> if you're shooting tighter, there's no need for everyone to have a whole, I mean, we, we're cool, we're family here. But not everybody needs to see your entire home. If right. you want to have a diversified, you know, backdrops for different occasions, fine. But again, they are sets. That's your corner. That's your second corner or wall, maybe your third one if you want to get really feisty, whatever. Same rules apply. That lighting needs to be on point. You need to look good. And um, I can't stress this enough. Don't get too innovative without checking everything in your backdrop because right. you never know what you might be showing. Um, one of my clients had her social security number on some document, like a bill or something. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, oh. that's what happens when you start, you start getting too innovative, you get too fancy, like, Again, Teddy Riley, you're doing the most. Don't do the most. <laughs> I will say this too. It's simple. Another thing is that our viewers are not dumb. So they're looking for Because food. you have said Emmy or have said Murrow, when you display them all behind you, <laughs> it's just so happy <laughs> face. <laughs> You know, like, like we, we know that's not a that's not a right here. congratulations. Right here. Now tell me about oh, you know what I mean? So like our Emmy Award winning Murrow Award winning. Don't be putting that stuff in the back. They know. <laughs> and, and, so many times I'm like, bless your heart. And this has been, you know, funny. <laughs> and this is not an issue, you know, necessarily for you know me, but I, I saw this on TV Spy where, you know, one of the reporters was doing something about oh, her husband. Her hair, and of course her husband was in the background in the shower. Like, and, oh, you know, yeah. or if you have, you know, like Elsa, you know, she's got, you know, she's got a little one. And I don't know how little is little, but, you know, sometimes, you know, little, yeah, they, well, that's, well, yeah, they're terrible. Yeah, this is crazy sixes. But, you know, they, 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 they can show up at any time. You know, and, and the biggest issue that I have, and I got a delivery from Amazon yesterday, right before I went on the air, and the guy rung my doorbell. That's the worst. Can't win. Yeah. So. Um, the worst I uh, I've ever seen, and I, I know I, it was from the BBC, I'm pretty sure. A guy was doing an interview, and again, we interview people all the time and tell them to set their laptop and play tech support. Please take the responsibility of kind of peeking around the background of whoever you're interviewing. Hopefully you can see it, and sometimes you can't. But remember that that viral photo of the guy who had like an adult toy on top of the refrigerator. So things like that. It's like tiger is better. Yes. And we can't control <laughs> what people might have. Harold. <laughs> wow. Y'all are Crazy. horrible people. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> is a <laughs> That's a Baltimore artist, Poncho. So I'm good. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, I have questions. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Quick got a question. I, I'm done with y'all. You all know what I was trying to say. I hate y'all. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you remember how, how crazy Thanksgiving was at my house? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just saying, look out for your interviewees. Um, they may inherently have things in their backdrop that are inappropriate or just do not speak well of who they are. Be aware. Um, like, if this is your, like, I'm going to Dave right now. So, Dave, if this is your, like, sports cove and cave, and this is where I talk sports and stuff, 
all right, keep it that way. If you happen to go and get a new, um, you know, bobblehead that's a little inappropriate for TV, then don't put it out there. Ta-da. Yeah, no Dallas no, Cowboys bobbleheads when you're doing Ravens interview. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, we don't care about that. Yeah. Oh, you, you think you think they don't, do, do you? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, there's Benet. I was wondering when she was going to stop going. <laughs> no, 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 no big speed. No She's big been hiding. The when, uh... I'm juggling too much right now. <laughs> but we're more fun. <laughs> we are definitely more fun. I'm here. Here I am. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Um, we got Karen now. We have questions, concerns. I was going to ask did Jessica. Was it Jessica? Yeah, it's your, it's who had the question? Did we get? Yes. Okay. Let's Jessica, see. Can we Jessica. hear her now? Is she back? She's not back. Who's yet. that? Try it. Try it, Jess. Try it. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <Hey>, Jessica. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I was having technical difficulties with my laptop, but um, thank you to all y'all panelists for hosting this. I'm really taking a lot of great notes. Um, thank you for telling me about my lighting. I know um, I'm in a room to where I only have two lighting sources. Um, one is a back lamp that I have, and the other is my window. So, like, and I also have a ring light, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like when when y'all were talking about the whole, you can see everything on my face. Like, I wash my face really good, but you can still see little bumps or something. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, what do you think I should do? Should I, like, Why don't you try it now? Try putting yeah. it. Are you on a laptop right now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Try putting your laptop the way David did, where your laptop is at the window and the window is facing you. Well, the window is facing your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the window is lighting you. So you're looking out the window, but your laptop is against it, if that makes sense. Is there a table there? Okay. Well, like, no, because my, um, let me show you. Already, that's better. Yeah, already, that's so much better. Yeah, that natural lighting is so much better. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go all the way to the window, but what you just oh, did okay. right now was like, Eight hundred times better. Oh, that's so much better. Like yeah. two different people. So pretty now. And then just your background. <laughs> oh. Your background is easy. If you close that door, take off what's on the on the wall there. I'm not even uh, mad at the window or the. Where did she, where did she go? Oh my! <laughs> you know what I mean? I have all this. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that's that's an easy fix. You close that. Let's come. Take off the what's on the door. You take off what's on the dresser, and there you go. You're set. Do you have some that coming out of the top of her head? That's so a thing. towel on the door. Do you have somewhere that you can put your laptop or sit your laptop on? Uh, I would have to sit it on my lap because I'm sitting at the desk right now. Okay. Do you have, a stool? Do you have yeah, do you have like, yeah, like a stool, a chair, um, a table, something you could bring into your room? Um, yes, you do. Yeah, I have like an eating it. table. It's a little low, but that's fine. No, do you do you do you have like old Amazon boxes or any kind of boxes laying around that you could pile up or any books? Because I this is what let me show you this. I have tons of this laptop right now is sitting on like two Amazon boxes. It's on a table, like a coffee table, but I have two big Amazon boxes. And if I need to to raise my laptop, I just add some extra boxes or add even books to get that laptop at eye level. So no matter how low your table or stool is, if you have, like I said, boxes laying around the house. <laughs> and you know what's a good background? Your desk. Because it's, 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 un, it's, yeah. it, it's unobtrusive and it doesn't compete for, perhaps with the subject matter. And so just like Karen said, if you just sit, they're not gonna see the boxes where your laptop is. And if your desk is your background, you know, you may want to neaten it up or what have you. But if, if all they're seeing is like a desktop and stuff on your on your desk, it's not it, it's a it's a working interview. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. But lighting is important. Lighting is very important. I don't okay. think this worked. I was trying to zoom in again so I could. Sh oh, wait. Yep. Yeah, there's double me. Hold on a second. Um, you are? Did you know? <laughs> Okay, let's double me again. Yeah, let's yep. double me. Okay, so if you see, I've got a hat box, I've got a shoe box, 
Then I have a stand that I typically would just have for the um, laptop to begin with, then the laptop. Okay, so I've finessed this. When I'm outside, I've got a, a tall stool that I have to put this on top of this, on top of this. It's a little rickety. You just wanna make sure it's not, wanna make sure it's level. Um, but no one can see that. So if you have a bootleg setup, who cares? As long as your out product is good. Yeah. So it ain't fancy over here, guys. Okay. That's it. Okay. I can't meet myself. Sorry, you have to MacGyver everything and um, to put it in layman's terms so we're not like too confusing and throwing too much at you guys. Just remember that normally there's a camera in front of you to take your video and your photos, right? So you know you hate it when people take photos of you looking upward because you look fat. It makes everybody look fat. I don't care how skinny you are, you look fat. You've noticed everyone else takes images downward or straight on. You look better that way. So you're just trying to create the tripod, but you don't have a tripod. You're, you're trying to make that picture higher so that it's meeting you. So right now it is your laptop or it's your tablet or it's your phone. The key thing is just because it's your phone does not mean it has to be down here. You're now making your camera, your phone into your camera, which means it needs to be closer, mm -hmm. yeah, to frame you well, but also needs to be more at eye level, if not a little bit above eye level. And remembering to clean your screen because yes. constantly, <laughs> yeah, because we're touching it. It's our phone, yeah. so we're touching it. Our laptop, even when we're putting it down, our mm -hmm. thumb might press it. So it might be good one time and then the next interview it's not. So constantly having that soft cloth and telling your subjects to, to the people that you're interviewing. Cause again, they do not know. I mean, their lighting's off, their thumb has hit the camera lens 17 times. It's, it's bad. So we have to be the ones that are helping them in, in real time so that our end product looks good. I think Maria had a question. Maria, um, you had a Thank question you. about tape, live to tape or tape, what did you go over tape to live again? I'm not sure I understand this. What do you mean by going over tape to live to segment? What are, what are we doing here? Let me unmute Hold you. Hold on. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, go for it. Um, taping a segment to air live, like on Facebook. Like. You mean live to tape? Kind of like Roland does. It live to tape. You mean producing a whole show? Because I mean, that's pretty much what, I mean, I'm confused. Like, is it? You know, like he, like when he shows up on Facebook Live, when Roland Burton shows up on Facebook Live, uh -huh. it says Facebook Live, but we all know it's a tape. No, it's not. Roland's show? Isn't he broadcasting from- Roland, my husband's been doing Roland's show. That's not tape, that's live. But then it replays late at night. So I know he's not. Yeah, but that's, it replays you know, tape. Yeah, just like any, okay. piece, any First video time. that's on Facebook, I mean, you can pull it up after it's done live. Right. But it still comes up saying live. And then there are some segments, though, I think that he does tape. But in general, tape to, if you want to tape a segment to broadcast live on Facebook, how do you do that? I don't. No, I mean, you do it live, and then when it's done, it will come up again as someone would request yeah. it if they're on. So if you did something, if this was live now on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, an hour from now, uh, it, would, it, it would come back up again. You would just have to, I guess, go to BABJ's Facebook page, and it would be there. I think I get it. I'm, I'm sorry. I think now I finally understand. So like, yeah, you did the show before. You want to have it run in real time, not just upload it and people watch it whenever, but watch it together, like watch party-ish. Um, I, I, I kind of got the imp impression that somebody is feeding it from their their desktop into like, like you're, it's almost like you're creating like a, a bootleg, I hate to say it, you know, like it's viewing on one side and then it's going straight on to the, the social media network. I don't know what app might be involved in that, but it seems kind of like, I've seen that before because people have been putting movies on Facebook and say, let's watch this together. And I'm like, they're just running it off of like a TV or something. The quality never is that great from what I've seen. Um, also the churches are running, um, again, have you noticed like on Sunday mornings, the churches are running their services? And we know that obviously the, the first service is just being reran again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're kind of pointing at? 
Well, no, okay, so that's a good example. So, for example, my church in LA, they mm -hmm. are doing, they come on live and it says live. The live light is on, but it's actually taped where they taped the praise team Tuesday. They took a, seg a previous sermon that Bishop preached and gotcha. packed that in. They've got an intro and an outro. Ryan. They got all of that into one show, yeah. but it shows live. Not so to that you once it's done, okay, okay. you can't go back and replay it. I'm going to cut you off because Brian does this. And okay. I was it's not calling on him because he was driving. But Brian, are you no, <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Um, so I actually just came from my church doing what you're trying to do. Uh, generally, what I do is when you upload a video to Facebook, it gives you the options to publish now, schedule, or premiere. And you select premiere. So then what will happen is on the side part, it will say live, but really it'll say premiere in the top left corner. And it will be as if it's live. So when I get home, I'm going to edit and my service will edit uh premiere tomorrow at 11 uh a.m hmm. oh that boy good that boy good <laughs> I'm coming <through> today <laughs> all right we're gonna bring ryan back next month to talk about how to premiere your stuff on facebook yo thank That's you right. Right. Is that okay. <laughs> and brian can i have a fry since you were at mcdonald's i know <laughs> Uh, my kids might fight you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go back and get more. Um, did I get all I'll take the filet of fish. Oh. <laughs> I'm a Big Mac. You can tell. You can tell. I'm gonna pay Brian for this delivery he's fish. doing. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I said, I said, I said, I hope they're gonna pay you, Brian, for all these deliveries that you're gonna be making with all these orders that are going on right now. I know, right? <laughs> well, Uber Eats loves me. <laughs> all right. Um, do we have any other questions for our people? Um, what I tried to bring up was uh, about the animals, Karen. Um, we had an we had a um, a cameo from Elsa's dog. Oh. Yes, I have a dog, and that has been difficult. He's sort of lazy, though, so if I just put him in the room, he'll lay. But mm -hmm. if someone comes to the door, or if he thinks there's activity, he'll come on down. So I have had to sort of, like, sequester him somewhere else. Yeah. Without leaving. Um, because didn't you have a cat, Karen, or something? I, I do, and unfortunately, that has not worked. I can lock him in the bedroom. He'll scratch on the door. Mm -hmm. um, I've done interviews at my kitchen counter and he will literally walk across on my lap up in front of the table. <laughs> they don't care. So that's a challenge yeah. that I'm, I'm learning to deal with as well. Uh -huh. That'll be like the draft last night. One of the coaches, dog got at his computer when he stepped away. Oh, See, America ain't ready for this work remote thing. <laughs> Yeah, that was Bill Belichick. He did that on purpose, I'm telling you. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> okay. Uh, right here. I am, uh, <laughs> I am totally going to wrap this up since y'all are like, y'all are good for that part. I'm going to try to speed through the business part. So um, let's give a round of applause and a thank you to our panel. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Harold. We appreciate y'all.